Y'all heard what I just said? So the leaves of the tree is for the healing of the nations. If everybody don't get Torah, if everybody don't get the word of Yah, they're going to be sick until he gets back here. But baby, let me tell you one thing. We might be starting in Louisiana. We might be starting in a little town called Independence, but we got the word going out to the nations of this world that they need the word for the healing of a nation. This nation and every other nation on the planet need healing. There are sick people everywhere. Evil everywhere. Nowhere to run from it. It's everywhere. The sun shining on evil. And the moon come out at night on evil. Y'all hear me? It's out here. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. That guy, that guy I forget his name, he made that song a long time ago. Nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Nowhere. Proverbs 14, 29. He who is patient. Uh-oh. Watch out. Everybody's scared of patience. Because through much tribulation comes patience. And everybody don't want the tribulation. But they want the patience. Uh-huh. He who is patient has what? What kind of understanding? Great. Remember what I told you before. Anywhere where you see the word great before word, it amplifies that word. So it's saying here, a patient person has great understanding. That means you have insurmountable amount of patience. Everybody understand that? Do you have patience? If you don't, then you don't have a part of the fruit. Because the part of the fruit is patience. It's called long-suffering. Yeah. You see, you got to be able to put up with stuff for a long time. How long did it take the Father to get you where you are now? Long time. He's been knocking on the door of our heart when we was teenagers and he finally getting through to us. We finally starting to understand so much so that we want to get to our young people and tell them so they won't have to go through that long period of time suffering. Butting your head up against the wall. Falling in all those ditches. Crying all night but you don't want your partners to see you crying. But you're hurting so bad. Because the friends you thought was your friends stabbing you in your back. Stealing stuff from you. Using you till they can't use you no more. Then they kick you to the curb. We're trying to keep our people from going in that direction again. I don't want to see those, my sons and my daughters and my grandchildren going through that stuff. I went through it. Oh, I'm glad I was able to say that just now. Boy, y'all missed that one. I went through it. Came out on the other side. Now I'm being prepared for the kingdom. <laughs> Ooh, boy, that's good to say. Hallelujah. But see, I want people like Thaddeus and Shannon that as young men to, to be able to get strong in this thing now while they're able to walk strong and tall and, and handsome and don't think that's all about them but that they got the esteem from Almighty Yah that now they're going to stand up and declare on the school campus, on the job, everywhere they go, Yah is Almighty. Yah is who I serve. Keep yourself unto Almighty Yah. Save yourself from this untoward generation. If they want to go out and do their thing, let them go. But you stand for Almighty Yahweh. You let the other young people know, for Yah I live and for y'all I will surely die. I'm not going to the world. My pastor told me about the world. My brothers told me about the world. I'm not going there. I'm not going to have an early pregnancy. My mothers at the church told me about it. I'm not going down that road. I'm going to save myself. Yeah. Hmm. Praise his name. Proverbs 15, 21. 
Folly is joy for one lacking mental capacity. What y'all got in y'all book? Mine, mine don't say that. In other words, he don't have no mental capacity for wisdom. He's empty-headed. That's why he can have fun killing you. Whoa, that was deep right there. Because he don't have to kill you with a knife or a gun. He can kill you in his foolishness. Y'all hear me? We don't need that, right? But a man of understanding walks straight, walks upright. That's what I just got you preaching about. Our young men standing up straight, back straight, shoulders up, head up. And devil say, come over here. And you look back at them in the world and say, no, come over here. Where the table is already spread. And a feast of Yah. Come on here now. <laughs> you come over here. I ain't coming over there. See, probably teach you about that woman that sits over there or the flattering on her lips and, and how sweet her, her dainties are and all that kind of stuff. And he said, but he said, you got a pit over there. Don't go over there. Go ahead, young man. Do what your eye is telling you to do. Do what your mind is telling you to do. But I want you to know after all that is done, you're going to be facing judgment. Oh, but because the, 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 the penalty for sin don't come swiftly, it's in man's heart to go right back to sin again. Hmm? But it's coming. It's on the way. Uh, Proverbs 15, 32. Same chapter. Go down to verse 42. He who ignores discipline hate who? He hates his own soul. If you hate being disciplined, I don't care how old you are, you can still be disciplined. But if you hate discipline, you hate yourself. But he who listens to reproof, guess what? So I don't mind if you're going to reprove me because I'm looking for somebody to help me. So if I'm wrong in this area, then reprove me so I can get some understanding. But don't just say, you're wrong and walk away. No, if you're going to reprove somebody, show them where they're wrong. Not from the way you see it. Take them to the book. And once you show it to them, then they have a choice. To either follow the book or not. That makes sense to y'all? Yeah. Go down to chapter 17 right quick. We almost finished. I know some of y'all hungry now. He, 1727, he who has knowledge does what? Do what? What does that mean? He holds his tongue. See, you, got, you might have a lot to say, but it ain't the time to say it. Takes wisdom to understand that. Huh? See, when I'm up here, if you got something to say, don't say it while I'm up here. Nobody's going to hold your tongue from praise. Nobody's going to hold your tongue from worship. But don't, 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 don't try to preach for, with me. It's my turn to preach. It's your turn to listen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when you try to preach with me, you're upsetting the court. Somebody else is going to turn their head from me and look at you to see what you're saying. I'm not the one who is greedy for attention. But Almighty Yah is jealous. If I'm preaching in his stead to you, you ought to respect it enough to understand it. Hold your tongue. Now, if you got something to say after I get through, put me to the side. And if you're going to reprove me and you're right, I'm going to stop the whole congregation and tell them, hold up, I said something wrong. Because I want more understanding. Yeah. What about you today? Yeah. All right. A man of understanding is cool of spirit. That's what your book said. Same one. Verse 27 is chapter 17. Yeah. He cool. <laughs> Every now and then I throw one in there so we can understand. 
Because we need to get an understanding. Praise Almighty God. Uh, Listen to this, y'all. Go to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Brother Ben, come up here. Praise Almighty God. Get him, get him a mic. We're going to start in verse 34. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll tell you when to stop. But if I, if I stop you intermittently, don't get mad at me. Hallelujah. Okay, chapter 4, verse 34, start. And at the end of the days of Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. Okay, hold it right there for a minute. Y'all know we're talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar was outside like an old ox for how long? You know why? Because he didn't understand where his power came from. Uh-huh. Go ahead, brother. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All right, now, this man, after seven years of living like an animal, uh-huh. finally got an understanding. Uh-huh. What was the first thing he did? He lifted up his eyes. Y'all see that? And then he did what? Praised. Mm -hmm. Blessed him. Made him great in the sound and hearing of anybody who was listening to him. Uh Y'all see that? See, when you get an understanding, you ain't ashamed to praise him. You want to praise him. You done been through something enough that you got to praise him. Go ahead, brother. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will. And in the army of of, uh, heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? Now, in other words, they can't ask him a question. So Nebuchadnezzar finally realized, I'm sitting in this kingly seat because of him. All the blessings that I have is because of him. All of the people that are blessed because of the riches that I have is not because of me, but it's because of him. When are we going to understand that everything we have is because of him? From our looks to our clothes to our houses and cars to our children, grandchildren, food and clothing, everything is because of him. Come on, brother. At the same time, my reason returned unto me. Come on. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and the brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my Lord sought sought unto me. Mm -hmm. And I was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty was added unto me. He had more added to him. Why? Because his understanding came back. Yeah. See, sometimes we lose our understanding, but you can get it back. Mm-hmm. Y'all hear that, don't you? Yeah. And when you get it back, that's when everything starts prospering for you. Because you done found out where you need to be. You done found out what you need to do and what to do. You done found out who is the one you are 